So even bio objects can be uh, can be uh, captured. Um, in this experiment, there is this um, E. coli bacteria being captured uh, and moved about. So this is an E. coli bacteria. Of course, you do not see it. It's, it's a bacillus bacteria, uh, but you do not see it uh, in such a way because the bacteria is oriented along the optical axis, so you see the cross section of the um, So. So, even, even, uh, so as long as you have a, a refractive index difference between the medium and the object, you can, and if the intercept refraction of the object is greater than the medium, you can attract uh, uh, them with the optical tweezers. Of course, our aim, um, what we wanted, is to manipulate molecules, uh, individual molecules. And nowadays, uh, uh, optical traps have become one of the main instruments of single molecule biophysics. And single molecule biophysics aims <coughs> at understanding molecules and studying molecules one by one. This is not your conventional type of experimentation. So uh, ne no, neither in biochemistry nor in biophysics, nowhere in biology for that matter, do we usually explore molecules one by one. But there is much to be learned by, about the, by, the, by exploring the distribution of the properties <coughs> Of the molecules. So, there, with this slide, I just wanted to give you, um, reveal to you the motivation behind actually carrying out uh, 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 experiments on individual molecules rather than on bulk. So, we can, by studying single molecules, we can identify individuals in, a, in an ensemble. It can be very important in the living cell. Uh, for example, this is the entire ensemble of the molecular system of the living cell, but you do not see the internal dynamics of the system. As long as you can, if you're able to identify single molecule groups, you can reveal the dynamics uh, and, uh, and related to the individuals. Uh, we can also uncover <coughs> stochastic processes. Um, uh, for example, the blinking of the force. In a bulk solution, we find this is this will be. GFP fluorescence in the cubet, but this is a GFP fluorescence of a single molecule, and you can see that it's turning on and off. It's a stochastic process, you cannot predict when the turning switching on and off uh, will occur. <coughs> there are certain uh, instances uh, where there are parallel pathway events can be identified. But this is folding, uh, protein folding, for example. It occurs in a parallel, in a spatially parallel way. <coughs> and uh, you can, as long as we um, study only bulk, we cannot identify the individual intermediates uh, uh, in this folding funnel. Finally, the mechanics of biomolecules can be characterized as a single molecule. So, this is important. Well, it turns out, for example, the form Willowbrand factor is a, is a molecule, um, which is in our, in, a, in our plasma, blood plasma, which actually is becomes functional only on binding and being exposed to shear stress. Um, and this marks the, uh, the site of, 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 uh, uh, of harm on the, uh, on the blood vessel edge. Um, then, for the uh, motor proteins can be characterized, can be seen walking on uh, microtubules. You can ask questions how much force is uh, being generated by a single motor protein. Uh, further mechanical motors, <coughs> just a few examples here. The F1, uh, F1 ATP generates, uh, generates uh, uh, ATP. Uh, and finally, the ribosome. The ribosome, which is the most fantastic, most complex uh, motor uh, uh, enzyme complex uh, in, our living, in our living cells. So, <coughs> how do we go about uh, traveling and manipulating individual molecules? Just to give you a and uh, um, a few uh, technical aspects. So, of course, individual molecules cannot be trapped directly with a laser, with the optical trap. So we need these beads, which I've already shown you, but the beads are actually humongous relative to individual molecules. This is a latest bead of one micro diameter, and this is the molecule, for example, a myosin molecule, with a, uh, with a size regime of 10 nanometers. Uh, nevertheless, you can still detect the motion, uh, uh, motion of these molecules and, and measure the forces by 
by looking and by using these humongous huge uh, uh, hand walls, simply because the mass, the inertia of the system is still extremely low, the mass of this beam is very, very low, and the entire system is assisted by thermal motion. How can we link these molecules uh, uh, to these beads, which, which will function as handles? This is an optical travel experiment in, uh, in which I will show you just one technique in which we glued um, the end of the molecule to the, uh, to the bead. Uh, what you will see in this video is the following. This is a trapped bead. This is a trapped bead. This is a bead on the, at the end of a pipe. And there's a molecule which happens to be tightened, uh, interconnecting between these two beads. And uh, um, one end of the molecule was attached by an antibody, but the other end uh, uh, was not specifically attached. And there are these covalent photoreactive covalent cross-linker molecules on the surface of the bead. And if we expose um, this bead to UV light by placing a quartz optical fiber in the parfocal plane uh, of this uh, custom microscope, you can expose the bead to UV photons, thereby making the linkage covalent between, uh, between the molecule and the surface of the bead. So this is like molecular welding uh, in a couple of with optical pieces. So once you, once you hook up your molecule, you can do some fun things. Optical tweezers have the advantage, they are basically uh, uh, hand micro manipulators without handles. So they don't have a handle. Our, I have a handle, my hand is a handle, of course, uh, but it has, uh, it's a manipulator, but it has a handle, which is my arm, right? So um, I cannot, I am unable to tie my shoelace without letting it uh, uh, go at some point in time. But with optical tweezers, of course, you can, you can tie knots on maybe like nanoscale filaments, like an active filament, or a DNA molecule, without letting the ends go. So there are two beads attached to the ends of these, uh, of either of these uh, uh, molecules, and uh, you can cross uh, the focal points uh, uh, past each other. And you can tie knots on the active filaments and the DNA molecule, of course, they are very different uh, polymer strands. That implements a non-covalent strand, therefore, um, eventually, it will be broken near the site of this uh, torsional stress. But the DNA molecule does not break because it's a covalent polymer. Furthermore, if you allow it to relax, it will untie itself. It is not going to untie itself due to the mechanical uh, the elastic properties of the molecule. So, um, we can then stretch, of course, uh, the molecules without the tweezer. So this is one way. Now what I'm going to show you is a special way of manipulating the experimental uh, uh, structures. Um, this is present in our department, uh, in, our, in our group. And uh, we have a, this is, this is a single optical trap, uh, which is actually relies on two lasers facing each other. I'm going to show you the geometry in the subsequent slide. And the molecule uh, is handled, manipulated in such a way one of the beads is captured in the optical trap, the other one is manipulated with a, with a micro pipette. And you can, by using piezo uh, transmitters, you can move the bead away from the optical trap. And you do not see the molecule, in this case, it's a double strand DNA molecule. But you can intuitively feel or see that there is a coupling between these two beads because this trap bead uh, was moving away from the from the central, central position um, uh, at once in the time during this process. And you can even make out that uh, there must be some plateau in this force curve uh, because the dur at, at some point, uh, for some while during the stretching experiment, the position of this bead was uh, stationary relative to the optical axis. Of course, we want to measure forces. <coughs> if you want to, so we need to calibrate the optical trap. This is a harmonic potential, and the edge of the potential uh, corresponds uh, to the stiffness of this virtual spring. And we need to characterize that by either by, <coughs> by exposing the uh, trial beads to known forces. Uh, you can expose it by, for example, by still drive, uh, that is uh, uh, forming in uh, solution of the human velocity. <coughs> if you know the velocity, you can calculate the magnitude of the force, and by measuring the displacement of the beam from the trap center, you can calculate, you can calibrate the forces. You can use thermal forces, that is the diffusion of the beam and 
and the mean displacement of the bead from the, from the central position and relate that to the trap thickness. But we can also <coughs> uh, directly uh, measure the change um, in the photonic momentum. <coughs> in order to do that, we need to measure the bending or the refraction of the, of the, uh, <coughs> the change in the refraction of the beam upon uh, refraction. In order to do that, we need to, be able to, we need to be able to collect all the laser light that actually leaves the optical trap. So this is an optical trap, so a dual beam half to half of the optical trap, in which where here is one incoming beam and it leaves on the other side. Okay, this is the other incoming beam leaving on the other side. You, you may notice that we are not filling the back aperture of the objective, uh, which gives us some space, some room for, in, for being able to collect the laser beam even if there was a deviation uh, in its angle. So this is what happens uh, if you pull on the molecule. If you pull on the molecule, this bead is displaced, and that will result in a change of the path of the, of the laser beam leaving the optical trap. Um, and we can measure that position of the, uh, we can measure the change in this, uh, in this bending of uh, the laser beam by placing the position sensing the diode in, uh, in, the, uh, in the path of this laser. So this will allow us to calculate directly the, uh, uh, the uh, forces exerted on this beam. <coughs> this is uh, the way, this is the uh, arrangement of the, of the instrument and this is the top view where you have tracking lasers, two lasers which actually are facing each other. This is the side of the action, this is where the optical trap is being formed. And the beads on the laser beam leaving the optical trap uh, is then collected by the position sensing photodiode on both sides. Okay? On both sides, and this is utilized to actually measure and calculate the, uh, the forces. This instrument is also coupled with bright field um, illumination. So, this is bright field uh, <coughs> uh, illumination of blue light from the given US recording with a CCD camera, and also with fluorescence. So we're coming in with a laser beam, uh, 532 laser, and we can excite in the fluorescent setting, the sample, individual molecules, and, and then we can collect the uh, uh, mixed fluorescence with a uh, high intensified CCD camera. <coughs> so, <coughs> in the of tweezers, we're actually, we, can able to, we are able to exert Forces in our micro system. This is just like a two slide, just a two slides. I want to expose you to that. Uh, in, in a macroscopic environment, we are used to um, Hooke's law um, when we expose macroscopic bodies to forces, uh, which means that there's a linear relationship between the extension or the distortion, <coughs> and magnitude of distortion, and force. But in the case of uh, when we stretch polymer molecules, we are actually um, uh, facing a very different mechanism of, of, uh, uh, of elasticity. This is called um, thermal or, or uh, uh, thermal elasticity related to the configuration of entropy of the, of the chain. So such a chain is exposed to thermal forces and it will be bending and it will shorten on increasing its temperature. And if we want, if we stretch it out, we are actually working against the tendency of the molecule to maximize its computational entropy. And as we pull this molecule, eventually the enter distance of this molecule uh, eventually will reach the contour length. And upon reaching the contour length, uh, an increasing uh, uh, magnitude of force uh, is required. So we, this is a nonlinear uh, elastic curve. Uh, very much in contrast to the Hookian uh, uh, force response uh, of macroscopic bodies. <coughs> How only do we, upon exposing uh, these molecular systems to uh, tiny forces with optical freezers, we are not only changing the shape of the system, but we are also changing the lifetime of the bonds that holds together uh, the system. So upon uh, loading such a system, we can actually uh, uh, 
decrease the threshold, decrease this activation barrier across which this bond can jump, thereby dissociating um, the, uh, the counterpart to this bond. So as we increase the length of the force, uh, we are actually changing or diminishing or lowering the activation barrier of dissociation. This can be used to even unfold, unfold proteins or pull apart uh, antigen antibody bonds and so forth. So that can be used um, in optical physical applications. So in the final few slides, I just want to share with you some of our results and some of our research on this giant and very interesting Titan molecule by using optical trap and optical results. So uh, we are pulling the molecule uh, and measuring its force. So we want to understand how does this molecule extend. So remember, as uh, we stretch our muscles, the molecule will extend. And what happens when we do this process? So as we extend, uh, extend this molecule, first we see this nonlinear force response, entropic elasticity, and eventually we start seeing this force soft soft teeth. And this force soft teeth are separated by a distance of 28 nanometers. And it happens that a single domain, as you may recall, this global domain, contains seven antiparallel strands, beta strands, and the entire length of the domain is four nanometers. Four times seven is twenty-eight. So it's exactly matches the actual length, the actual contour of the, of the domain, which is packed into a single domain. So the only possible, only plausible explanation for the appearance of these force uh, salties is that in single step process, this lower domain is actually open up, thereby increasing the total length of the molecule uh, 20 nanometers one at a time. <coughs> now, <coughs> this could be described by a so called two state model of unfolding this domain. So this is the folded state, the inner state. This is the unfolded state, and by, by increasing the force, we are actually changing, lowering the barrier towards unfolding. And eventually, we expect that the molecule will might actually recover its length, fold back in a, yet again in a single step. <coughs> 